In this video we're going to be looking at creating our own t-shirt design. Basically I've gone online and downloaded this template for a t-shirt and they've given us an orange box here in the center of the page where we can fit our design inside of. Okay, We do need to design our logo or our artwork in a different document and then transfer it across to the t-shirt template. Now the design that we're going to work with today is this one. We're going to make this from scratch and then it's up to you to modify that in whatever way you want whether you change the colors or some of the shapes that are being used inside it it's up to you. Some ideas on the finished product on how you could change it up are here. So you could change the color scheme, just go to monochrome color you could play around with the type a little bit you could add some different shapes like these bottom two options are endless really. Um, so let's head over to Illustrator now and get started on this. We'll begin today by making a square shaped canvas. So let's go up to File and New. We'll give it a name. We'll just call it uh, T-Shirt Design. And the sizes we want, we'll make it about 150 mils by 150 mils. And we'll choose a 3 millimeter bleed, CMYK color mode at 300 pixels per inch. We've got just the one artboard too, I forgot to mention that. Click OK when you're done and you'll get a square on your page ready for us to make our design. Now to help me out with drawing this, I'm just going to simply select this one and copy it by pressing Ctrl C. I'm going to paste it onto this page. And I'm just going to make it a bit smaller and move it up here so we can just copy that. Now the lines are a bit too thick on that, I might need to make the stroke a bit smaller so we can see what's going on. I might even make the shape a bit smaller. Okay, so that's just there for a bit of reference um, so we can keep drawing ours and not kind of flicking back between different tabs all the time. So to start with, let's grab our rectangle tool. We will choose a nice light green to start with. Um, this one here looks nice. Oh, probably a little bit dark, that green there. And we're simply just going to draw a rectangle across the page something like that. Okay, now the size of the stroke, at the moment it's a black one point stroke, we want to make it about three point stroke. Okay, that's a good start. So just move that shape down a bit so we've got a bit of room to work with. Next thing we want to do is the handle for this stereo, so it's just another rectangle. Now when you draw this, just first of all hold control and click off that shape so it deselects the main one. And we can change our colors now to have no fill color. We just want a three point black stroke and we're just going to draw ourselves a handle that goes across the top. Something like that will look good. And using your black arrow you can just move that around until you get it in the center. Okay, so far so good. Next thing, grab your rectangle tool again. We need a light yellow color and I think the yellow that we pick here is way too bright for this artwork. So what I'm going to do is hold shift and click on this little yellow box up the top and actually tone that yellow down a bit so we get a nice light yellow. I'm going to start roughly in the same place as the handle and just click and drag across to the other handle. We'll get a nice little yellow strip that goes across the top of our little stereo here. So, so far it's looking like this. Next thing, grab a rectangle again. We're going to try and find the center. There it is, the center. Hold Alt, click and drag out. And we're going to draw ourselves a little rectangle. Like so. Now this rectangle's got some lines inside of it, so we're going to grab the line tool next. Simply draw, holding shift, a line straight across there. Hold shift again and draw another line across there. And now we're going to go to our shapes box here and choose the ellipse tool. I'm just going to hold alt and then click and drag holding shift as well to draw a little circle. Okay now this circle I'm going to switch the colors around here so we've got black fill color no stroke. Okay, I'm just going to nudge it across a little bit with my arrows. That looks pretty good. Well I've clicked on that what you can do, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this, I'm going to hold the ALT key and simply click and drag whoops, and hold SHIFT as well and you get a circle that you can move straight across and now we just shift them around until they're in the center, there we go so that's the inside of our 
little tape player, I suppose. Okay, control zero will make you zoom out and go back to full screen here. Um, this is probably a little bit too high, so what I'm going to do is just select all these bits and pieces. I'm going to go to object and group them together. And then I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better. Okay, next thing we might do is grab the ellipse tool again. I'm going to switch the colors around. And I'm going to say no stroke. I just want a black fill color. In the bottom left hand corner down here, I'm just going to hold Alt and Shift and just draw myself a little circle. It looks something like that. Simply edit, copy, edit, paste that. There it is there. So I might have to zoom in to pick this up and drag it, but I'm just going to drag it down. Roughly the same position as the other one on the other side. It's got two little circles in the bottom left and the bottom right corners there. I um, might do the actual speakers now. So using, we might use rulers for this. I'm going to press Control R to bring up my rulers around the page and drag them down so they snap onto the top and bottom of this yellow section in the middle of my stereo here. And I want the circle to pretty much fill up that space, maybe a little bit smaller. We'll go with it there. So I'm going to click on my ellipse tool and select black stroke again and make it three point. And I'm going to choose a darkish green color. And I might even have to go I have to shift click I think. And I'm going to choose a, a dark turquoise. Might even have to shot, slide the levers a little bit. We'll try this for now. We'll see how we go. Okay, so I'm just going to hold Alt Shift. Simply drag out until those lines meet. There we go, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, it looks good. And inside that speaker, actually I might nudge this across a little bit. Just want to get it right in the center. Yeah, about there is good enough. Just press Control Zero now to zoom back out a little bit. And inside those speakers we've got these little love hearts. And to draw a love heart it's not too hard. I'm going to use the curvature tool. So look over in your toolbox for the curvature tool. It's next to the pen tool. Just make sure you've got no fill color and you've got a black stroke set to three point. Now I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I do to draw a love heart. Pretty handy tool once you know how to use it. I want you to click once in a bit of space. So click once. And just move your mouse. I'm going to go up and to the left, say about that far, not too far at all. And I'm going to click again. As I move my mouse now, you can start to see a curve appear. Okay, and as I move my mouse in different directions, you'll get different curves. Now we want to make a curve as if we're making the top of a love heart. So, say about there looks pretty nice. So I'm going to click a third time now, and that's the top of my love heart. And what I'm going to do again is just come down. I want to try and get this almost in line with that white dot. So I'm going to come down as close as I can and make the first half of the love heart. So we'll say about there. When I'm done, I'm just going to press the escape key once, grab my black arrow, and now I've got one half of my love heart. What I'm going to do is just check to see how close I was to having these perfectly in line by using my rulers. If you don't have your rulers on your page, press Control R. Or go up to your view menu and show your rulers. And you can simply drag a ruler out onto the page. I'm going to put it right on the edge of this top part here. And we can see this bottom path. It's almost in line with it. it. Might need to be stretched out a little bit. So I'm going to grab my white arrow tool. Just click on this anchor point here on the end and just drag it out a little bit. That now meets the path. Do the same with that one. Now our lines perfectly on that path. Alright, so I'm just going to grab my black arrow, click on that guide and delete it. And what I'm going to do is click once on my first half of the love heart, right click on it, go down to transform and choose reflect. And as you can see when you reflect it you get the other half of the love heart. Make sure you click on copy so it doesn't replace the first half. You'll end up with a shape like this. Simply hold shift and use your right arrow to nudge it across until you get to about oh, yeah, about
about that point there. You want to have a bit of an overlap. Now what we're going to do is grab our Shape Builder tool next. Press Control A just to highlight everything. We're simply going to click in here and drag across those two black lines that are coming inside here and that joins them together. We're going to do the same down the bottom. We're going to click outside of the love heart and simply drag over the top of those two black lines. And let's join those two black lines together as a shape. You can grab your black arrow now, just click off everything to deselect everything and then just click and select these two lines and press delete. Same at the bottom, click and drag over them, press delete. And there's your love heart. You can grab your white arrow tool and click on some anchor points and you can adjust these a little bit if you think it looks a little bit funny. Now you don't want to do it too much because you'll probably wreck it but you get the idea. You can play around with these handles and move them around as you're needed. I think I might leave it as it is because it's looking pretty good. I'm going to grab my black arrow and just drag it down into my speaker. It's a little bit big at the moment so I'm just going to hold shift and resize it. Try and get it in the center here somewhere. Where's the center? About there. And I'm going to change my stroke color to white now. And we're left with something like that. Not too bad. You may need to nudge it around a little bit so you can get it looking pretty good. Whoops, I just pressed the wrong button there. Are you zooming in? I think that looks fine. So what I'm going to do now is group these shapes together. I'm going to click on the circle, click on the love heart, go to object and group it. So that becomes one big shape. Well, I'm clicked on that shape now with my black arrow. I'm going to hold the Alt key and simply click and drag off it. I can hold Shift as well to move it straight across. And I'm going to get that somewhere in the center over there. So it's pretty much in the same position on the opposite side to that first speaker. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to click on these guides here now just down the side and press delete to remove those. Um, zooming back out a little bit, if we look at the top one, the last thing we've got to go is this aerial. And if you want you can do those little uh, speaker waves coming off it. So draw the aerial, just grab your line tool. Make sure you've got black as your stroke colour, set to three point. Click somewhere at the top and just drag out. You probably want to go to, yeah, about there. Grab your ellipse tool. So you just switch the colours around. So we've got, whoops, click off that aerial first. Now you can switch the colours around. Black fill colour, no stroke. Hovering right on the end of that, it's going to hold Alt, Shift, and draw myself a little point on the end of the aerial. Looks good. Now draw these little wavy bits on the end of the radio. I'd probably just use the curvature tool again. Can be a little bit annoying, this tool. I'll give it a go though. So click once twice and three times. Now what I'm going to have to do is press escape to turn it off. Switch my colors around so I've got black stroke and no fill. And it's just a matter of using my arrows and a bit of a rotate to get it in the right position. I might use two point for my stroke size. That looks all right. You can just do the same again up a bit higher and make it slightly bigger curve, so one, two, three, press escape to finish, and do it one more time, one, two, and we'll go three, escape to finish. If we have a look at that, we've now got some speaker waves coming out off the aerial. So I'm going to delete my reference picture now, we don't really need that. If you want to add some text in like they did at the bottom, heart beats benefit, whatever that means, you can put that in if you'd like. Otherwise, that's your finished radio or your stereo. Just a matter of highlighting it all now and grouping it together. So go to object and group, or we'll press Control G. Then we copy it, go back to our t-shirt mock-up and we go to edit and paste in front. It's only small, so we will have to resize it. Like we are using vector files, so we can resize all we want. So hold shift, give it a bit of a resize, get it to fill up that orange square area. Looks good. Now you want to delete that orange square because you don't want that printed out on your shirt. And there's our shirt. I think it would look good with some text, so maybe just zoom in. 
Control R to bring your rulers up. We might get the text to start and finish exactly on the sides of the stereo. So just in this gap here. So those guys that made this design are at Heartbeats Benefit. So I'm going to draw a text box out. And simply write in capitals Heart Beats Benefit, whatever that means. Okay, we can highlight that, center it, make it nice and big, maybe size 36. We'll go into our character menu here. Let's add a heap of tracking in there. So 200 is nowhere near enough. Let's add, say, 1,000. See what that looks like. Oop, a bit too big. Maybe 750 for our tracking. Maybe drop our size down a bit. There we go. That fits in pretty nicely now. So I can highlight. Whoops. Maybe just click on those guides. Press delete. Control zero to zoom out. And you can just nudge that text around as needed. That's a pretty nice looking t-shirt. Okay, it's up to you now how you finish that off. You can change the colors and add some cool uh, different features and effects to that stereo. But I think that's a cool way of making a t-shirt. When you're done, go to File, Save As. Uh, you just save it in your ITS folder as, we'll call it, T-Shirt Design. And save it as an AI file. Okay, that's okay when that box comes up and you're all finished.